The Coors Brewing Company is a regional division of the world's third largest brewing company, the Molson Coors Brewing Company. Coors operates a brewery in Golden, Colorado, that is the largest single brewery facility in the world. History Founding In 1873, German immigrants Adolf Kors and Jacob Schuller from Prussia emigrated to the United States and established a brewery in Golden, Colorado, after buying a recipe for a Pilsner-style beer from a Czech immigrant William Silhan. Kors invested $2,000 in the operation, and Schuller invested $6,000. In 1880, Coors bought out his partner and became sole owner of the brewery. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Prohibition. The Coors Brewing Company managed to survive prohibition relatively intact. Years before the Volstead Act went into effect nationwide, Adolf Kors with sons Adolf Jr., Grover, and Hermann established the Adolf Kors Brewing and Manufacturing Company, which included Herald Porcelain and other ventures. The brewery itself was converted into a malted milk and near beer production facility. Coors sold much of the malted milk to the Mars Candy Company for the production of sweets. Manor, the company's non-alcoholic beer replacement, was a near beer similar to current non-alcoholic beverages. However, Coors and his sons relied heavily on the Porcelain Company as well as a cement and real estate company to keep the Coors Brewing Company afloat. By 1933, after the end of Prohibition, the Coors Brewery was one of only a handful of breweries that had survived. All of the non-brewery assets of the Adolf Coors Company were spun off between 1989 and 1992. The descendant of the original Herald Porcelain Ceramics business continues to operate as Coorstec. Products For much of its first century of existence, Coors beer was marketed solely in the American West. While California and Texas were part of the 11-state distribution area, Washington and Montana were not added until 1976 Oregon did not approve sales in grocery stores until 1985. This gave it mystique and made it a novelty, particularly on the East Coast, and visitors returning from the western states often brought back a case. This iconic status was reflected in the 1977 film Smokey and the Bandit, which centered around an illegal shipment of cores from Texas to Georgia. The company finally established nationwide distribution in the United States in the mid-1980s. Pennsylvania brewery Yangling has often been compared to a modern-day version of the Coors Mystique, due to its availability in mostly eastern and southeastern states. In 1959, Coors became the first American brewer to use an all-aluminum two-piece beverage can. Also in 1959, the company abandoned pasteurization and began to use sterile filtration to stabilize its beer. Coors currently operates the largest aluminum can producing plant in the world, known as the Rocky Mountain Metal Container RMMC, in Golden. RMMC is a joint venture between Ball Metal and Coors, having been founded in 2003. In the 1970s, Coors invented the litter-free push tab can, in place of the ring pull tab. However, consumers disliked the top and it was discontinued soon afterward. 
Coors Light was introduced in 1978. The longtime slogan of Silver Bullet to describe it does not describe the beer, but rather the silver colored can in which the beer is packaged. Coors Light was once produced in yellow bellied cans like the full strength Coors, but when the yellow coloring was removed and the can was left mostly silver, many dubbed the beer the Silver Bullet. Topic Mergers In 2005, Coors was rated the third largest producer of beer in the United States, and the second largest brewer in the United Kingdom through its subsidiary, Coors Brewers Limited. On July 22, 2004, the company announced it would be merging with Canadian brewer Molson. The merger was completed February 9, 2005, with the merged company being named Molson Coors Brewing Company. Topic: <laughs> Shenandoah expansion. In August 2004, the Coors Brewing Company announced plans to add brewing capacity to the Shenandoah Beer Packaging Facility in Elkton, Virginia, by early 2007. Coors officials stated that this would bring brewing capacity much closer to our important East Coast markets and distributors. Labor problems In April 1977, the Brewery Workers' Union at Coors, representing 1,472 employees, went on strike. The brewery kept operating with supervisors and 250 to 300 union members, including one member of the union executive board who ignored the strike. Soon after, Coors announced that it would hire replacements for the striking workers. About 700 workers quit the picket line to go back to work, and Coors replaced the remaining 500 workers, keeping the beer production process uninterrupted. In December 1978, the workers at Coors voted by greater than a two-to-one ratio to decertify the union, ending 44 years of union representation at Coors. Because the strike was by then more than a year old, striking workers could not vote in the election. Labor unions organized a boycott to punish Coors for its labor practices. One tactic employed by the unions was a push for states to pass laws banning the sale of unpasteurized canned and bottled beer. Because Coors was the only major brewer at the time not pasteurizing its canned and bottled beer, such laws would hurt only Coors. Sales of Coors suffered during the decade-long labor union boycott, although Coors stated that declining sales were also due to an industry-wide downturn in beer sales, and to increased competition. To maintain production, Coors expanded its sales area from the 18 western states to which it had marketed for years, to nationwide distribution. This was completed in 1991 with Indiana being the last state for the brand to appear. The AFL CIO ended its boycott of Coors in August 1987, after negotiations with Pete Coors, head of brewery operations. The details of the settlement were not divulged, but were said to include an early union representation election in Colorado and use of union workers to build the new Coors Brewery in Virginia. In 1988, the Teamsters Union, which represented brewery workers at the top three U.S. beer makers at the time Anheuser Busch, Miller, and Stroh, gained enough signatures to trigger a union representation election inside the Coors Company. Coors workers again rejected union representation by more than a two-to-one ratio. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Minority problems. Mexican Americans charged cause with discriminatory hiring practices following the passage of the Civil Rights Act, and launched a boycott of the company's products beginning in the late 1960s. Labor unions and gay rights activists joined the boycott, which lasted into the 1980s. A federal lawsuit in 1975 by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission ended in a settlement with CAUSE agreeing not to discriminate against blacks, Hispanics, and women. In 1977, CAUSE was accused of firing gay and lesbian employees. Cause encouraged the organization of its gay and lesbian employees into the Lesbian and Gay Employee Resource in 1993. In May 1995, Cause became the 21st publicly traded corporation in the United States to extend employee benefits to same-sex partners. When company chairman Pete Kors was criticized for the company's gay-friendly policy during his 2004 Republican primary campaign for a United States Senate seat from Colorado, he defended the policy as a basic good business practice. <laughs> Political influence According to Russ Bellant Cause family members have played a prominent role in American politics and public policy, supporting many conservative causes. Such causes included providing a $250,000 grant in 1973 to found the Heritage Foundation, an influential conservative think tank, and, via its parent company, the right-leaning think tank American Enterprise Institute. Joseph Kors was also known to have supported the Contras effort in Nicaragua during Reagan's presidency. Chairman Pete Kors ran unsuccessfully for the United States Senate from Colorado in 2004 on the Republican ticket. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Brands Cause is responsible for over 20 different brands of beer in North America. The most notable of those brands are Coors, Killian's, Caffrey's, and Blue Moon. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Joint venture with Sab Miller. On October 9, 2007, Sab Miller and Molson Coors Brewing Company announced a joint venture to be known as Miller Coors for their U.S. operations that will market all of their products. <laughs> <laughs> Change of ownership In September 2015 Anheuser-Busch InBev announced that it had reached agreement to acquire competitor Saab Miller for $107 billion. During the merger discussions between the two companies in 2015, the U.S. Department of Justice had agreed to proposed deal only on the basis that Saab Miller "...spins off all its Miller Coors holdings in the U.S." which include both Miller and Coors held brands—along with its Miller brands outside the U.S. The entire ownership situation was complicated. In the United States, Coors is majority owned by Miller Coors, a subsidiary of Saab Miller, and minority owned by Molson Coors, though internationally it is entirely owned by Molson Coors, and Miller is owned by Saab Miller. Saab Miller agreed to divest itself of the Miller brands by selling its stake in Miller Coors to Molson Coors. The merger between the two companies closed on October 10, 2016. The spin-off deal was completed on October 11, 2016.
As per the agreement with the regulators, Saab Miller sold to Molson Coors full ownership of the Miller brand portfolio outside of the U.S. and Puerto Rico for $12 billion. Molson Coors also retained the rights to all of the brands currently in the Millicoors portfolio for the U.S. and Puerto Rico, including Reds and import brands such as Peroni, Grolsch and Pilsner Urkel. The agreement made Molson Coors the world's third largest brewer. In Canada, Molson Coors regained the right to make and market Miller Genuine Draft and Miller Light. Topic business names Schuller and Coors, Golden Brewery 1873 Adolf Coors, Golden Brewery 1880 Adolf Coors Co., Golden Brewery 1909 Adolf Coors Brewing and Malting Company, Golden Brewery 1913 Adolf Coors Company 1933 Coors Brewing Company 1989 to 2008 Molson Coors 2005 to 2008 parent company of CBC Miller Coors 2008 to present a joint venture Rocky Mountain Metal Container 2003 to present a joint venture in aluminum can production with Ball Metal and Coors Topic CEOs Adolf Kors Adolf Kors III Joseph Kors Douglas Roy Kors William Kors Fritz van Paraschen Leo Keeley, current CEO of Molson Kors Brewing Company Peter Swinburne, current CEO of Coors Brewing Company. Topic: Marketing. Coors sponsored Premiership side Chelsea from 1994 to 1997. The last competitive game that the club wore shirts bearing Coors as sponsors was the 1997 FA Cup final in which they beat Middlesbrough 2–0 to end their 26-year wait for a major trophy. Current affiliate Carling was title sponsor of the Premier League from 1993 to 2001 and since 2003 has sponsored the Football League Cup. The two brands are also former sponsors of Rangers and Celtic. The clubs have worn strips with Causelite logos for exhibitions in North America, while elsewhere the strips promoted Carling, which is not offered in the United States. Coors is also the official beer sponsor of NASCAR and formerly the NFL until Bud Light replaced it in 2011. In addition to its official NASCAR sponsorship, Coors Light has regularly sponsored cars in the series. They sponsored Melling Racing, Team SABCO, and most recently Chip Ganassi Racing. Drivers to have Coors backing have included Bill Elliott, who won the Winston Million in 1985 and the 1988 Winston Cup Championship, Robbie Gordon, Sterling Marlin, Kyle Petty, David Stremer and Regan Smith. Coors is the title sponsor of the Pole Award in the NASCAR Sprint Cup and Nationwide Series. Coors stopped sponsoring a stock car in 2008. Coors or Molson are beer sponsors of the NHL's Colorado Avalanche, Detroit Red Wings, Arizona Coyotes, San Jose Sharks and all six Canadian teams. 
The company owns 20% of the Montreal Canadiens with the Molson family owning the other 80% having purchased the shares from Colorado's George Gillett in 2009. Coors is also the official beer of the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association PRCA. Coors currently holds the naming rights to Coors Field in Denver, Colorado, home of the Colorado Rockies baseball team. The Coors Events Center on the campus of the University of Colorado at Boulder in Boulder, Colorado is named after the company. The Coors Life Direction Center of Regis University is also named after the company. Coors has sponsored English rugby league side Workington Town from the 2007 season, as well as British ice hockey team, the Belfast Giants. Coors was the main sponsor for the Coors cycling team late 1980s to mid 1990s and the sponsor for US cycling event the Coors Classic which ran from 1980 to 1988. Coors is a sponsor of English rugby union team Gloucester. Coincidentally, both Coors and Gloucester RFC were founded in 1873. Coors, through product line Worthington's, brews a special beer, King's Home Ale, which is sold in the stadium. The Worthington logo is featured on the team's jerseys. See also Coors Light Molson Coors UK Millicoors Molson Molson Coors Brewing Company Smokey and the Bandit <laughs>